Hi everyone, my name is Zach. Here on Bite Size Engineering, I make ridiculous projects like this to get you excited about making your creative ideas and unleashing your inner maker. The first thing I'm gonna do to this machine is actually remove those V wheels that I installed earlier in the series. There's nothing wrong with using V wheels for a machine like this, but I think most of the professional machines use a linear rail like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap those out for something more substantial like this linear rail. The linear rail that I ordered came just a touch too long, so I'm gonna to have to cut that off. This linear rail material is super hard. A hacksaw with a normal metal cutting blade is not gonna get through this material, so I'm gonna to have to use a cutoff disc in my Dremel. I designed these metal brackets and had them made using a service called Send Cut Send. Not only did they bend these sheet metal parts, they also tapped them and powder coated them. Send Cut Send is a new sponsor to this channel. I'm pretty picky and selective when it comes to working with brand sponsorships. I only pick companies and brands that I truly believe in and I actually use. I would love to keep working with Send Cut Send and in order to make this a mutually beneficial relationship, I need you to click on the link in the description and just go check out their website. Even if you're not currently working on a project where you need the services, I'm sure it's going to inspire you and it'll stick in the back of your brain and someday down the road you're gonna say, oh yeah, that would be perfect for this project. If you're excited to use Send Cut Send but don't have a project or design files ready to upload, go to my website and you can get the design files for the spool rack I made a few weeks ago for free. You could use this spool rack for 3D printing or wires or whatever other types of spools you have. Upload those free design files to Send Cut Send and have the finished parts shipped to your door. So do me a favor and click on the link in the description and when you're ready to make a purchase, you'll get 15% off of your order. I finished installing the linear rail and now I need to attach the timing belt to the rail and to do that I've designed and cut out a little aluminum bracket on my CNC machine. It has four holes to bolt to the underside of the x-axis gantry and then it has a couple of little slots that I can slip in the timing belt and then tighten down using a zip tie. I don't know if you can tell by looking at this, but um, this little drag chain uh, requires three different screws to attach to the bracket here. But I bought two different sizes of drag chain. I bought a bigger size and then a little bit smaller size here because I wasn't sure which size I needed. So I designed the bracket to actually uh, accept both different sizes and it shares one of the screws as a common screw. Uh, and then there's a couple extra screws for the smaller size. But that will allow me to either use a big drag chain or a small drag chain depending on how many wires and cables and hoses and stuff I need to, to route through these drag chains. My next task is to figure out a way to attach the drag chain to the laser head that moves back and forth. So to do that, I'm going to make a sheet metal part out of this 16th inch aluminum. I've never bent any sheet metal, so this will be a new experience for me. But I've got some new tools here and I'm ready to give it a shot. Oh my gosh, 
that just totally split that piece of aluminum. Oh my gosh. This is my first time bending sheet metal like this. I just got this vise and this little metal break here. And I'm kind of shocked that, that that bent it like that. It must have stressed it so much that it, it caused a little crack. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. I, I did some research before I started and, and I don't think I did anything wrong. Maybe if you know more about this than I do, let me know. But I'm not sure why that cracked like that. Maybe I'll give this another shot. Maybe I did it too fast, I'm not sure. I'll go slower. Yep, same thing, started to crack right there. Dang, what am I doing wrong here? Yep, totally broke right in half. Dang, that is a bummer. So the only thing I can think of is that uh, this is 6061 aluminum, and I read on a website that um, I think it's 5052 is a much better aluminum for bending. So maybe this is just the wrong type of aluminum. Maybe this is not really meant to be bent like this. That's kind of a bummer though. So instead of using 16th inch aluminum, I'm gonna be using eighth inch aluminum. Hopefully that will bend better, but we'll see. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. Okay, here's the moment of truth. It definitely deformed it, and you can see it stretching in the back there, but oh, I think this is gonna work. Should be strong enough. I'm just gonna finish it off just here in the vise. No! Oh no! I just felt it break. Ah! Crap. I still think that's gonna be strong enough though. Gosh. Here goes bend number two. Get it lined up on my bend line. That worked way better. It's starting to stretch here, but I think that's gonna work just fine. You know what, this didn't turn out that bad for my first sheet metal part. So I'm excited to keep experimenting and learning how to do this a little bit better. With that done, I think I'm ready to install the laser head on the gantry here. I'm getting pretty excited because things are moving along. The next step is to attach the mirror mounts to the frame. Now these come with some mounting hardware that you can adjust, but for some reason I can't figure out how to attach these to my frame without modifying them. So I'm going to drill and tap a couple of holes in these so that I can mount them in my frame. These mirror mounts have tiny little adjustment screws in the back, but I need to get these mirrors mounted sort of in the ballpark for those to be effective. So that's what I'm working on right now, is mounting these to the frame in the general area, and then once I get the laser installed, I can make these tiny adjustments using the screws. Okay, I've run into a little bit of a hiccup here. I started aligning these mirrors kind of to the, the laser head because that was kind of a fixed position. Everything else is adjustable, so I kind of started from there and worked my way backwards to the laser tube. However, when I got back to the laser tube, I'm running into an issue of being able to adjust the laser low enough to be able to hit the mirrors. Rather than install the glass laser tube, for obvious reasons, I'm using this cardboard tube as an analog. It's roughly the same diameter as a laser tube. If I go any lower, it's gonna start running into the gantry that's moving back and forth, so I'm trying to figure 
figure out a solution here. The solution is gonna be one of two things. Figure out how to lower the laser without running into the gantry, or figuring out how to move up the laser head so that I can move everything up. Instead of trying to lower the laser tube anymore, I was running into issues with it running into the gantry and there's just no way around that. So instead, I opted to raise all of the mirrors. For the laser head, I just had to print a little riser block and the same with that final mirror that I had to modify. Those changes were pretty simple. So at this point, I have the laser head, the mirrors, and the laser tube itself all complainer, and they're all lined up. Now that the drag chain is installed, I'm ready to start fishing the wires through the drag chain and all the way to the end. So the first thing I wanna do is run wires for the motor as well as the tubing for the air assist. Once I've got those run, I'll install the autofocus sensor as well as the red dot sight. Next up, I'm ready to start wiring up all of the electronics, the motor controllers, and all that stuff. If you remember from the last video where I built the base cabinet, I had that really wide open area in the back of the machine. My plan is to put all of the electronics down in that area. Once I have all of that hooked up, I'm going to install the laser tube and the mirrors as well as the lens. At that point, I'll be ready to make my first test cut. Oh geez, I really need like a stool to sit on back here. Hold on. Think that'll work? Here we go. As I started to connect the water chiller, I couldn't get it to communicate to my laser controller, so I opened it up to troubleshoot the problem. This water chiller, which costs like $500, comes with like a flow sensor here to let uh, my controller know whether or not there's water flowing out, and it, if it's not, then it will shut down the machine as a safety precaution so that it doesn't damage the laser tube. But if there is water flowing, then it'll let the machine know and it can uh, activate the laser just fine. This is the electrical connector that has the signals that tells the laser controller whether or not there's water flowing and if it's safe or not to turn on the laser. In the owner's manual over here, it says that pin number two here is connected to the normally closed terminal of the relay. But if you look at pin two on here, there's nothing connected to it. So there's no way for it to tell me that there's not water flowing. So that's really annoying because this thing was supposed to tell me whether or not there's water flowing, but it's not working properly. And of course, I'm gonna to have to troubleshoot it and figure out a way around it, but I think I got it. This is the relay that I need to figure out which of those is that normally closed terminal, and then just wire it to that pin two over there. 
So it's not terribly hard, but it's just really frustrating that an expensive and professional solution like this doesn't come wired like it's supposed to. And I forgot to mention that it's really late at night as I'm trying to troubleshoot this, so that's adding to my level of irritation. Now to further my frustration, not only did they not wire in that pin too, they actually swapped these two wires. Now that I'm looking at the relay, they definitely have those swapped. I'm just really frustrated with this because they clearly didn't do like a quality control check on this because this would not have passed. Of course, the hardest pin to get to is the one that I need to solder to. That should be good to go. I just need to slide a little bit of heat shrink over it. Quick little tip, if you don't have a heat gun handy, you can always just use the thicker part of your soldering iron. It's not good for it, but it works in a pinch. Perfect, it's better than new. With all of that nonsense sorted out, I finally started on aligning the laser beam and mirrors. There are a ton of videos on how to do this on YouTube, so I'm not going to go into detail here. This is exactly why I'm using this piece of wood as a backstop. My first test fire ended up way over here off to the side, so that's why I put this backstop here. Now I've moved it, I'm going to test it again. The process is basically test firing the laser and making fine adjustments until the laser fires in the center of the mirror. I worked my way around the machine until I had all of the mirrors aligned. The final step is to install the lens which focuses the laser beam. After all of that work, I'm finally able to actually cut things out using this laser cutter. In the meantime, there's still so much work that needs to be done on this machine. In the next video in the series, which you can watch by clicking here, I'm going to build a motorized bed for the Z-axis. I also need to add some panels to enclose the machine and put a proper lid on there to make it way more safe. Whether you're making your own CO2 laser cutter or some other crazy idea that you came up with, I make videos like this to get you excited about making things and unleashing your inner maker.